Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. Now the topic for today is about old magazines and I love old magazines because I love the great high quality reference photos and just some of the crazy images that you can find in these magazines. I love design magazines and architectural magazines, all kinds of magazines because the reference photos are just so great. Now, something like this here, this Nova Scotia ad, is a great example of a landscape that I normally wouldn't see. You could find it on the internet, but what if you're in a coffee shop or you're out somewhere and you just wanna draw? This is a great way to learn to draw certain elements that you didn't know how to draw before. Now for me, as a kid, I used to take tracing paper and just trace everything in sight because it was something that I loved to do and it's how I learned to draw things, like drawing this boat. If you didn't know how to draw the boat before, well, now you know how to draw it because you can practice tracing it and just using this magazine as a reference to learn from. And that's what this is all about. So I can take that little boat house and move the boat over and shrink the house a little bit and change it to whatever I want. And the reference becomes my image now. Now, I'm not stealing. I'm not cheating. It's not that. It's for fun, and it's just to learn from. And that's the whole point that I'm trying to get to today, is that magazines are a great resource to help us learn to draw and to have a really good time just drawing, especially, like I said, if you're not near a computer or a device. Now, this gentleman here, this is a great photograph of a person's face where you can just practice just getting the components of his face, getting the elements, the lighting, and the shading, and all that, and practice practice, 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 learning how to draw his face. That way, once you capture all the elements, you can then build your own version of this person and make it look similar or even just like that person based on your drawing skill. And that's what I love about this method. So there's a bunch of different reasons why I love these magazines. I like to just look at the pictures because they're such great high quality pictures. Photographers know lighting, they know just all the perspective angles, they know how to just set the stage. And that's like this photo right here. It's just a great example of how you can learn perspective drawing, for example. The photographer set it up like this, but if you're a student and you don't know perspective drawing, take a piece of tra tracing paper, just lay it over the image, and practice drawing back in space. It will actually help you understand and see how perspective drawing works instead of trying to draw it freehand, which might cause some confusion or frustration. Once you get this down, then you can do it on your own and just have a great time doing it. Now for me, what I love to do is if I'm trying to get a reference photo together or just create a new image for myself, I might combine different images. So for example, like this little house here, it's not terribly exciting, it's a really cool picture, but it's not terribly exciting by itself. So what I'm gonna do is take the outline of that and incorporate it with this picture of stairs that I saw a few pages ahead. And I can combine those two reference images from the magazine and create a whole separate third reference image for myself. And this is just for me and it's just for fun, like I said, but it allows me to explore some different options. And that's what I love about having magazines on hand is just, this wasn't in my mind and I wasn't looking for it, but here it is and I got to draw this. And I can even take it further and I can combine even a third reference and this cover of this magazine has this little horse on it and some trees and stuff. And once I incorporate those into my drawing, you'll see that it creates a whole new separate reference image if I wanted to build this out later, I could do a whole sketch based on this image. And, you know, again, it's just for fun. Now, other things I love, like this um, Psychology Today magazine, by the way, clock ads and watch ads always set to 1010. Think about that. And um, <laughs> what I want to say about this is I love the pictures of people because this woman's face is so perfect. It's so beautiful because all the rich details of her face are there. You get all the lines, the freckles, her hair. Everything is just really high quality. It's a great image. You're not talking low resolution on your computer or your device. It's a really great image, and you can lay a piece of tracing paper over it just to capture some basic information, like the shading structure. Now, yes, I could sketch this out myself, but this saves me a ton of time because I don't want to sit around all day and erase and sketch and erase and sketch and erase and sketch. This allows me to just capture some basic highlight and, and shadow details, which I can then fill in off the page. I don't have to trace for these details. They're already there for me. So I can line them back up and I can do all kinds of other things with it now. And if I want to give it a more harsh graphic look, I can take a Sharpie and just go over it again. And now I've got that. So there's a bunch of ways to use magazines for reference photos. Let's talk about some other ways to actually have more fun 
using old magazines and learning to draw, right after this coffee break. So those are a couple of educational ways that I can recommend using old magazines for reference photos, to create new references, to just see and draw differently using something like an old magazine. And it's a great way to keep in practice and have fun. Now for me, another way to have fun is to take magazines and pictures like this that have a ton of space and fill that space. I mean, they gave us the stage already and it allows me to just add additional elements and be really weird <laughs> and just have a ton of fun. I love doing this. I've been doing this since I was a little kid. I used to use ballpoint pens. Here I'm using a Sharpie. Whatever works for you. I know pencil and some markers won't work, but these photos are great high quality images, like I said, and they set a stage that just invites me to draw my little doodles in. Now, I could have put, you know, a potted plant. I could have put anything, really, in, in, in these spaces. But for me, I just like to get a little bit weird and a little, little bit funny. My kids will come along, you know, before I throw these in the recycle bin, my kids will come along and they'll flip through these magazines before I get rid of them. And <laughs> they're like, Dad, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> And they laugh at me because I'm drawing all over these magazines. Now, I don't mean to desecrate the magazine or insult the photographer's work or anything. Anything like that. I cherish the work these photographers do. It's, it's absolutely stunning work. And the publishers create just such beautiful magazines, but they do leave this space just sitting there waiting for someone like me to come and fill that space up. And I have such a great time doing it. And there's so many different kinds of images and magazines from architectural to like People in Time magazine, Psychology Today. There's so many different kinds of magazines, sports magazines, cooking magazines that you can do this with any of them. And it helps you stay in practice. It helps you keep your brain and your hands and your, your creativity fresh. And it's just, for me, I just do it in the morning. Uh, not all the time either. Like maybe once a month when I'm getting rid of these magazines, before I throw them in the recycle bin, I'll sit at the kitchen table before work with some coffee and I'll just go through with the Sharpie in my hand and just <laughs> entertain myself and have a great time. They're great images, but they are begging to have some, you know, I don't want to call it graffiti, but you know, just some doodling going on. Like this image here, it's really hard to see anything there, but once you really kind of look at it a little bit, there's always something you can put in there just to have a little bit of fun with. And uh, for me, it's just an opportunity, like I said, to keep myself fresh and entertained, and it's positive. By the way, here's another clock ad with the number, with the time set to 1010. You'll notice that in all magazines, clock ads are generally set to 1010. There's a reason for that, but I'm not going to get into that. That'll, I'll have, I'll have to save that for another time. But like I said, these pictures are great images, but they are just begging for additional stuff. And my sense of humor and the way I draw, I just love doing this and it's not going to hurt anybody. It's not offending the, the photographers because they really don't care. Now this, this is, <laughs> this is a gentleman. I've actually met this gentleman. He, uh, he works for a company here, uh, in New England. I'm sure he'd get a kick out of this if he saw this image and just somebody drawing this weird dog sitting behind him. But, um, that's another image where it's just, it's begging for something else. It's an editorial piece that has a story to tell and I'm just putting players on the stage and it's just so much fun. I highly recommend trying this if you've never done it before. Just grab a ballpoint pen or again, a Sharpie and just have some fun. You can do anything you want. You can draw cactuses. You can draw stick figures. You can do whatever your skill level allows you to do or whatever time permits you to do. So just try it, have some fun with it. And um, this is what I do with my old magazines. And it's better to do something like this instead of just throwing them away or recycling them. One thing I will say is when I was a kid, I was obsessed with putting, <laughs> putting mustaches and beards on people in pictures. It still to this day cracks me up. I don't know why I get the biggest kick out of it. You know, putting unibrows, mustaches, and little space between their teeth. I used to put devil horns on some people. It just entertains me, and it's a lot of fun. And I've been doing this, like I said, since I was probably in junior high school. And uh, my parents used, used to drive them crazy. My dad would go to get the newspaper, and I would have <laughs> put mustaches and beards on everybody. And uh, he used to just, don't touch my newspaper. But um, for me, this is just pure entertainment, and I have a lot of fun doing it. But like I said, before I get rid of these, it's just a great way to just use them one more time, to, to leverage my skills and my ability and my time 
to do something that entertains me and is interesting to me. Now, this is absolutely fabulous. I love this right here, this little spread. These four faces, they're all about the same size, and there's so many things I could do around them, uh, on their faces. There's so many things you can do here. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try to create composites of them. So I'll take her hair and some of her features and I'll put them over here and, you know, <laughs> add his features and add his features here. And you can create composites from each of these people if you want, if that's something that <laughs> entertains you or whatever. But again, it's educational because the more you draw, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you want to draw more and the more you want to learn even more than that. So this is just a great way and it's a lot of fun for me. Again, the tracing paper helps a lot. I could do this on my own paper, but this is just a time saver. But uh, here you'll see it's like, again, you can do anything you want behind them. I could have put a forest behind this guy. I could have done, um, I don't know, all kinds of things going on here. I just <laughs> have a little fireman and a little fire ladder. There's all kinds of things you can do. And you know, no matter what kind of magazine you're drawing from, if you have like a, uh, a home and garden magazine, you can do things with plants. You can learn how to draw plants. You can learn how to draw uh, herbs and spices. You can learn, learn how to draw food. There's so many ways that can benefit you from drawing from old magazines, just taking them, setting them down. Whether you're tracing on tracing paper, drawing right over the fruit on the image, just tracing right over it, uh, anything you want. It's a great way to learn. And pictures like this, there's not really much I can do with this. I could draw her face on another piece of paper, but here I'm going to have some fun and, uh, you know, <laughs> just add some elements to her face and just have a little fun. You can add some sort of zentangly decorative things. Again, it's just for fun and it's just for me. It's not for anybody else. I'm not going to be sending this to anybody, but I'll tell you, it really relaxes me. I get really into these drawings and the more you get into it, the more fun you have. And by the time like a half an hour or so goes by, you're like, wow, I, I just spent a half an hour doodling in magazines. And it's really just a ton of fun. So by the time I'm finished with something like this, you know, it's time to go to work or you know whatever I'm doing next. At the end of it, when you put the magazine away and you come back later to it and you flip it open and you see the doodles you did, they actually look better to you later. And uh, that's one of the things I love too, is to come back to these drawings and see what I did before and kind of forgot about it. My brain kind of forgets the little details. Like this bust here has all these notes all over it. Why not put some words on there, you know, and just have fun. And, you know, back to this guy, there's so much I can do for him and just entertain myself and just create a whole editorial situation going on around him, just adding a bunch of little icons or just little doodles. And it takes on a whole new meaning. And this magazine could actually publish something like that. I could see this being published with those illustrations around this man's head. And it's a very trendy thing to do uh, in magazines right now is to have doodles over magazine stuff. And this is this is stuff that I was doing when I was a kid. So uh, the fact that we're seeing it now and it's trendy now is just amazing to me. So I hope you explore something like this. Take this and run with it if, it if it's enjoyable to you. Maybe you already do it now and it's something that's already, you know, in your routine of, you know, habits of, of drawing in magazines. But if you don't do it already, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's great exercise for your brain and your creativity, keeping your eyes and your hands working together and keeping them fresh. It's not digital, it's traditional, and it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope this was helpful or just enjoyable for you. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd love to bring you more content in the future like this. And um, always keep that creativity in everything you do. Thank you again so much. God bless.